Documentary filmmaker and producer Yoruba Richin traveled with her mom, professor, playwright, civil rights activist Aisha Rahman, to Washington, D.C. for President Barack Hussein Obama's inauguration. Grit TV's Elizabeth Press met up with them on Dr. King Day at the Lincoln Memorial. Hi, my name is Yoruba Richin, and I am uh, here in Washington, D.C. I am from New York City. I'm a 36-year-old documentary filmmaker and producer. And I was born and raised in New York, um, in Harlem. My mom made the decision that she was going to come to Barack Obama's inauguration back in July, um, before he won. And she made the reservation to, for a place to stay. And, um, and that's why we're here. We're taking part in this historic event. It's amazing to be here. My mom was also at the March on Washington. So it's even uh, especially poignant. And she, you know, to be here on MLK Day today and then for Brock's inauguration tomorrow. Hi, Mom. Hi, Yoruba. How are you today? Oh, I'm wonderful. It's a beautiful day. My name is Aisha Rahman. Uh, I am a uh, teacher at Brown University. I've been teaching at Brown for uh, 12 years. I uh, teach uh, drama and uh, screenwriting. I'm a professor of literary arts. I'm a playwright. My last book was a, a, a memoir about growing up in Harlem. And uh, I'm about to finish my first novel. How do, would you say that politics fit, fit into Very your much work? So. My p politics does fit in. I'm talking about America. You know, and I'm, they, even though I'm focusing in on black women, it, it includes all women, okay? My most famous play, as you know, is Unfinished Women Cry in No Man's Land While a Bird Dies in a Gilded Cage about single mothers, you know? Uh, my other well-known, most well-known play is The Mojo and the Say-So about a killing of a, a young man in Brooklyn. So they're topical events, and uh, of course it's political. Uh, I grew up in Harlem in the 40s and 50s, okay? And left uh, early in the 60s. Those were very, very political times. Uh, I am the granddaughter of a slave. Talk a little bit more about uh, growing up in the, you were born in 1936, uh -huh. and growing up in the 40s and the 50s in New York as uh -huh. a, a black person in Harlem at that time. I had a great childhood. You know, I, I never thought that, you know, we never thought that we lived in the ghetto. You know, we never thought we were poor. We did know about the injustices. You know, but we had a tight-knit community, and even though we were, and I'm not romanticizing, you know, even though we were human beings with all kinds of flaws and difficulties, you know, we, 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 we were very tight-knit, and we were very um, interested in overthrowing the oppression. We were interested in freedom. I grew up knowing that art and politics were combined, okay? You write about it very beautifully in your memoir, the activism that was all around you mm -hmm. at that time. Talk a little bit about it from a personal perspective as a young black girl growing up in the 50s. I mean, well, we have so little idea of what that would feel like now. I know. We really felt it when we went to high school. You know, I went to a high school in which there were 50 black uh, kids. They did not want us there, you know. Everything was segregated, you know. Um, and uh, we knew it. You moved down to the village uh -huh. in the in the late fifties, yes. and um, became more politically active yes. at that time. Yes. What was that? Talk about that. Well, I moved down into the village because uh, I wanted to go to Paris, <laughs> but I didn't have the money. So I said, "Well, I could pay fifteen cent and go down to the village." Because I was just the metro card is much more now. <laughs> I ran into people from CORE, and I joined immediately. Can you say what CORE is? A, a, the Congress of Racial Equality, the organization that started the Freedom Rides, okay? And um, so I became involved in that, and then I met the activists, the people my age. I met 
uh, people like Mary Baraka and other people. I joined Fair Play for Cuba. Uh, we demonstrated at the UN when Lumumba was killed. We demonstrated. Who was Lumumba? Lumumba was Patrice Lumumba, who was the first democratically elected uh, prime minister of Congo. And the reason why the Congo is uh, disorganized in such disarray uh, and disintegration now is, is, can be traced quite uh, directly to the death of uh, Patrice Lumumba that was engineered by the West, by Belgium, French, in, uh, France, English, United States. Yes, and they couldn't understand why it was the first demonstration uh, of, of American blacks for an African and, uh, prime minister, and they couldn't understand the connection. So I was very involved, I've always been very involved of the politics of the time. You know, of course, Malcolm X was there, Martin Luther King, and we followed both of them. We were getting more and more disenchanted with uh, Martin Luther King and his, and his uh, um, pacifism. But then, you, you know, hindsight is something else because you understand his strategy and understand what a great man he was, you know. And that's why when I listen to Barack Obama now and I see his strategy and I see his strategy of compromise and peace, I can't help but think of Martin Luther King. Tell me about, you came to the March on Washington. Yes, you? I did come to the March on Washington. And the March on Washington, is the history is quite something. Because the March on Washington was, it was originally supposed to be a protest. Okay, because of all the killings and all the frustrations, Martin Luther King said, okay, we are going to march on Washington for jobs and freedom. All right, and that was a big scary thing for the administration. And uh, if you know the history, the March on Washington said that I became watered down. It almost became, a, well, we called it a nanny, a picnic. And by that, I mean that, you know, people like John Lewis, his speech had to be edited because the, the Catholic priest in Washington, the head, I think his name was Patrick O'Boyle, he refused support for the march. Uh, unless John Lewis, who got, who has gotten beaten many times, unless he t took out uh, certain passages about we will march and we will fight and we will get what we want, it was too militant. So and the, and most people, you know, they came, but they knew how much the march had been changed. However, when I look back on it, I think it might, in some ways, it might have been wise because. If it was an angry march, if it was a violent march, I mean, you know what, I mean, all of those people, it would have been massacre, and Martin Luther King knew that. It was the motivation for the Civil Rights Act the next year. So, you know, I've seen things, I've seen th this, this, you know, change, change, change slowly, you know? And that's the way, I mean, that's the way it's been, I've seen it. This is another change. This is another crack in the iceberg. Do you feel like this is a compromise? No, do, you, do you feel no, like, no, why not? Some change. progressives? Uh, progressive well, change. I know that, but maybe it's because I'm wiser now and I'm older. I have the, the benefit of hindsight, you know? But this is a time of hope. I feel very hopeful. I didn't feel hopeful then. I was angry then. I was angry and disappointed. This, I'm very hopeful, okay? I'm hopeful because of many things. I'm, oh, I'm hopeful, hopeful because of what the young people in this country has wrought with the, the election of Barack Obama. It's, you know, uh, it's another time. They have wrought a, mirac a miracle, and I really mean that. I never thought that I would see that. I think Barack Obama is a human being, but he is a human, he's an evolved human being, just like Martin Luther King was, you know, just like Malcolm X was. And uh, he's doing what has to be done now. He's doing, and he's, and he's standing on the backs of these people. And we have to understand that. 
This campaign has taught me so much. Barack Obama has taught me so much about, you know, about, and, and Martin Luther King, about compromise, about, you know, to obtain your goals, you know, uh, about directing your, 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 your anger at injustice in productive ways. You know, I have been taught that. Obama has taught me that. All of them have taught me that. As far as comparing the time, well, personally, I have to tell you, what, uh, one point is that this country today, at this moment, feels like South Africa, when I was in South Africa with you, South Africa after apartheid. The feeling in that country from the young people, but from everybody, from the Afrikaners, which I made it a point to speak to, and from the ordinary South Africans, Black South it was this kind of feeling that it was hope. It was a change that something had been, you know, thrown off. Some evil had been thrown off. And they were saying, collectively, they were breathing. And there was hope, you know, the hope. And they were willing to work for change. We have thrown off such evil, such evil that has threatened to to, 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 to drown us fast, fast, fast. And we know that we have to work. We know that there's a lot to do. But I think that we are breathing, all of us in this country, all of us are breathing a sigh of humanity for hope. And it's up to us to keep it up. I feel like I'm on the, on, on a, like the cusp I'm dancing between many, many areas. You know, I can look back. I can look at back at my youth, which was a, uh, certainly better than the, than the life of my, my grandparents. And I look at, at my youth, that which I became an activist. And then I, I'm looking at the present time, you know, which is a fruition of, in a sense, a fruition, a realization of all of those uh, uh, activities in, in my young life. And I'm also looking at the future. And I'm looking at the future through you and the young people and seeing the possibilities, the possibilities, just the possibilities, just the possibilities that can be if we work together. And I think we have, we can. So I'm just feeling just sort of almost like a uh, oracular or divine or some word. I can't, I can't. <laughs> what does it mean for me to be here with you? I mean, I, it's very hard for me to put in, into words, you know, but um, it's, what can I say? It's very hard. This is my this is my daughter, you know, this is my daughter who's, I can't even answer that. What does it mean? It means everything to me. It means everything to me. You know, the fact that she and I are here together, you know, and that she is the act, she has the values, you know, and the social consciousness, you know, which is why I love her, not because she's mine, but because I like her as a person and her values and what she has committed her life to do, her young life to do. That's what it means. Plus, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> to be here with my mom and be able to see this and experience this together, it is. It's a blessing. It, it's everything. It means everything, you know. And having the benefit of her history and of what she experienced and the struggles that, you know, that she went through to to give me my life and, and who the opportunities I've had. Um, and now we see, now we both experience this, this next thing, which we thought would never happen and have been talking, we've been talking about the children, you know, the kids who grow up and this is their, this is their president. It's, it's unbelievable. And I, it's also the kind of thing where I don't know if we're gonna be able to really put words on it until after, you know, till looking back you know, of, of what this moment, of what this moment really means. Um, and I think it's really interesting the, 
you know, what you were talking about in terms of the compromise, because in some ways, you know, we are, in, so, in some ways, we are in a compromise moment, perhaps, like politically and, and, you know, with all the, with two wars, with the collapse of the economy, with, a in some ways, a very politically divided society. But, you know, this man, Barack Obama, has lifted up through that, bubbled up through that, and is trying to, you know, lead a new way. And we don't know what that way is going to be. And we, you know, are hopeful and we're going to have to push and we're going to have to work and we're going to have to, you know, demand um, much in the same way the civil rights movement demanded that the Civil Rights Act was passed in, with Lyndon Johnson or you know, the labor laws with Roosevelt. Um, but I, I keep saying, I'm like, this is the happiest time we'll have these next couple of days. So let's let's enjoy it. That's why I got my Obama hat. You know, I'm like, this will be the, the last, probably the last time I want to buy gear that has his name all over it. Because inevitably we'll be disappointed. But um, one of the things that I'm really hopeful about, besides all the work that has to be done, is that there'll be a new conversation around around race and, and history and our place in this in this society and what has been our, our history in, in America. And that really hit home for me the other day when I was reading uh, an article and it talked about the fact that the National Mall here that we're standing on used to be a slave market. Now, and it had a, a drawing of it, of a, of a slave market, you know, and I, I thought that was so interesting. When do you ever see, A, I didn't know that, and B, when do you, when do you ever see drawings of it, you know, which exists, but it's not something that's in the textbooks necessarily, you know. I knew that the slaves had built the Capitol and the White House, but I didn't know that the, 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 that it was a, a slave, um, you know, a slave market. And I'm really hopeful that those kinds of conversations we will can start to have as a nation. Um, and even, you know, even if it's not him that's bringing it up, but the fact that we are now wrestling, you know, that we have the fact of an African American in the White House, that there'll be more drawings on the cover of the New York Times and other papers talking about this history. And then also, too, to have the first family, the, the Obamas, in there. I mean, what a, what a shift to have the world looking at this beautiful black family. And um, another thing, too, that I think is really powerful for me being here with my mom, my mom has influenced the, um, I guess from, all, from always, the being a, just a political person and being concerned and interested in the wider world. It was something I was just taught from a very young age. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm always thankful that I had that upbringing and that I had that um, push to engage um, and, you know, to give meaning. Part of giving meaning to your life is, you know, trying to work for something, for something bigger than just you. Um, and I want to thank you for that.